Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. I'm so excited for another Dar es Salaam farming tour video. Uh, this is the second one. Make sure you go see the other one about uh, cows and how to milk a cow and all that good stuff. Today we're going to talk about broiler farming so stay tuned. <laughs> talk about farming of broilers and how is it different in Dar es Salaam compared to that of Kenya. So we have ha done a video on broiler farming. Please go down on the videos and check out uh, the Kenyan scenario. But this is how we are comparing the differences between the Kenyan one and the Tanzanian one. So I happened to visit Dar es Salaam and on holiday, you know me, I'm a farmer. <laughs> I gotta capture in a story or two about farming and what are they doing better and how we can learn from them. So I came up with a few tips that can help you in your farming as well. So broiler farming is farming of chicken for meat and meat only. No eggs, no nothing. <laughs> it, it grows very fast. It takes about five to six weeks. And what I noticed about in Dar es Salaam, because it is near the beach, it's the tropical climate, which is super, super warm near the beach. It's like Mombasa. So it means that it's even warmer. And that means that things grow faster. Crops grow faster in warm areas. Remember how I always say Kitengela crops grow faster than Nyahururu where they're dragging because it's cold and the seeds, you know, they need warmth to come out of the ground and and thrive so the same with chicken because of that they are able to get their their meat or their crops in the market faster which means less losses or more profits for their business so this farmer uh was in midst of town they are an urban farmer they've just secured a small corner in their compound to make sure that they are making money even as they're hustling doing other things and you can as well so the tricks about broiler farming is first to have market and don't be scared when you hear market everyone shies away and they're like oh uh premium tears and it is true but i'm also here to come to you know to show you that these are lessons we learn these are things we know how not to do so don't think of it as failures especially in farming think of it as i am learning i'm gaining experience and the first place to check for market is to go to other broiler farmers and ask them who collects your chicken from you how do you get it to the market they probably have these middlemen or people uh, who have contracted them even people from hotels and other markets that are in constant demand of broilers because remember nowadays people are eating healthy so they are choosing lean uh, meat white meats and chicken is uh, uh, at the top of that list in terms of health so broiler farming are usually in high demand those are the chicken you see going kukusoma <laughs> that one also people doing ketogenic diet there are a lot of people with chicken almost every day especially in the city it's very popular and in Dar es Salaam because a lot of tourists and a lot of white guys really like chicken like they can eat chicken every day you've seen the meal preps on YouTube you know that they value chicken and they usually go for the broiler variety so first go to people who are farming um, broiler chicken ask them where you can get market number two go to hotels supermarkets any other places that you know that they are retailing chicken and ask them you can if you can supply them uh, for us we have calculated and seen uh, a minimum of 300 chicken you can be able to start with that and make a profit don't start with a hundred chicks if you, you can start with 100 chicks if you want to give yourself that allowance of learning and you're not putting yourself too much pressure of expenses and, you know, costs and that kind of thing. Because it's always good to start small and scale up once you've figured out what you're doing. So, but for profit making, 300 chick, chicks to start with, you will make a good, um, a good profit. Another thing is, if more than five chicks die in every 100 a batch of 100 because they're sold in 100 uh shillings 100 chicks boxes if five of them die the sixth one will be a loss on you so you have to keep the mortality really really low and one of the ways uh we found that in Dar es Salaam they do that is to make sure that they are warm what happens is that if chicks are cold 
they get to cram together they step on each other and suffocate each other and die that is a major cause of death in chicken farming so you have to be careful about warmth about how to control temperature if you see the chicks coming too close to the bulb or to the source of heat it means they are cold if you see them on the corners going very far away from the heat it means they are very hot the, the heat source of heat is too hot so they should be around running around eating and just playing and just walking around that's how you know they're healthy so they have this uh jikos that you know you just uh you wash out your motor don't make sure that the smoke has gone the maca has worked all the way red then you put it in that pot which has holes and then you place the pots randomly inside the compound these pots can keep heat for up to 8 to 10 hours that means you don't have to wake up in the middle of the night to replace the charcoal you guys know the struggles of chicken farming you have to <laughs> have shifts just to make sure you have that bag of money you know making money is not easy and these are some of the tips and solutions to make sure that you're getting your money more efficiently and easier so make sure you get that jico it's good for energy saving and also make sure that your chicks won't die because of overcrowding and stampeding on each other <laughs> stampeding hard anyway yes we also realize that they use molasses they add molasses to their drinking water this is what happens chicks are like human beings all living things mostly like sugar so when you hear that water you're drinking has sugar you tend to drink more than mostly you'll drink a, a, a glass of water but when it has some sweetener let's say soda or juice or other things you'll find that you're taking more and that's the trick sugar also is high in carbohydrates and you need those chickens going big 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 quickly so that the scale can tip and you can get your money as quick as possible this farmer was doing uh chicken farming um at the time i was visiting it was at four weeks and he was telling us they are going to the market in three days so you can see he has cut around four days which is usually five to six weeks is the time they reach that weight if they are uh overweight and you haven't found market it means that they are eating into your profits they eat a whole bag a day so make sure you're keeping tabs on that it's very sensitive do not keep them longer than you need to this is also as well in pig farming don't keep them more than you need to offload them put them in the market even if you're not getting your ideal client just get rid of them get your money move on start the cycle once again uh, this is something that you can do even six times a year it's always good to let the shelter to remove the manure which is very profitable a lot of people look for chicken manure from broiler farming and it's very profitable you can be able to be selling that because it's also used as much because of the wooden shavings that are put and then they're mixed with the manure from the chicken so when you scrape it off you scrape the house you spray you make sure there is enough aeration then you bring in the new chicks after you've laid the new chips uh wooden shavings yeah yeah so that's also a money income that you should not forget another thing is you shouldn't forget to to give your chicks vaccines and in that hot area vaccines are very delicate and sensitive and people already know that they have created a lot of awareness on vaccine handling kenchik did an article please go check it out on vaccine handling and they are saying that is why there is high mortality for individual people keeping uh chicken as you know kenchik is one of the biggest producers of broiler chicken um but now they supply to things like kfc they don't uh have outlets anymore they close their kenchik outlets to in order to retain that contract with kfc which is fine because KFC is buying um, in good numbers and I think Kenyans have now upgraded to better uh, outlets and things like that. So yeah, so they wrote an article of how handling of vaccines is the issue. Myself, I had to go for training. So don't go and say I'm going to buy vaccine, gumboro or, or you know, swine flu or, or coccidiosis medicine. Don't go and say you're going to buy that vaccine and then you are you know doing errands you know me, women you have shugulis you need to go to the market you want to make your day count because 
once you go back to the farm you don't know the next time you'll be in town so you want to do all these things so you're not supposed to do that you're supposed to either do all those things and then go to the vet shop buy your vaccine make sure it has an ice attached to it and then put it in the thermos flask when you put it there thermos keeps things hot or cold so you don't need it to come to the normal temperature it needs to be i think minus now you end up getting home and the water has melted it means your vaccine is not active then you come home you put in the freezer you are not supposed to do that as you guys know vaccine is a live element of that disease you know how it coronavirus you're being doing a vaccine it means the coronavirus itself was removed the gumboro virus itself was removed elements of it and traces of it were removed and so you're injecting that chicken to make sure that it's tolerant when the disease eventually comes it's the same case do not put your vaccines in the freezer i will repeat this do not put your vaccines in the fridge freezer they go into the fridge into the bottom compartment another thing is to check for expiry dates those two things are the cause of why vaccines don't work in kenya or in africa or something like that so make sure you have a thermos flux put your things there you can go do errands and then make sure when you get home you give it to the chickens uh you can you also need to deworm your broilers and give them a multivitamin to boost their energy one thing i realized about farmers for broiler chicken in Dar es Salaam they keep their lights on the whole night and it's not just for warmth it's so that the chicken can know that it can think it's daylight and because there is food in the trough they will wake up and eat so in a way you are kind of <laughs> <laughs> over feeding them you're feeding them 24 hours a day day and night you're feeding them and that is how you attain that weight actually the weight grows too fast than the feathers so you find most of them don't even get to have enough feathers to cover their entire body you know which means it's less <laughs> hassle when you're trying to slaughter them and take them to the market because you need to remove the feathers or find a system where either you're delivering them as live and then the person is going to remove the feathers and everything or you are going to do it i prefer to do it because then it means i get those you know <laughs> excess that the market doesn't want those parts the neck the head the feet the liver the all those things you can be able to find a separate market for that you can be able to find dog food uh, out of that you can be able to do so many things so it's a different economy but it's still money on the side that you can be making yeah it's very fast it's because they use pellets and not animal you know it's not in in powder form you right? say in flour form so feeds any animal feeds are usually a mixture of certain things usually maize uh sorghum millet uh sunflower seeds um things like uh, cotton seed maize jam those kinds of things and so when they are mixing them yes they mix them well um, from the manufacturer but when you put it in the trough for the chicken to eat the beak is you know it's not adaptable <laughs> it's not like a dog that it will lumber everything the chick you know it just and it might not be taking everything it might not be taking the correct proportion as far the percentages needed let's say you need a chicken needs to eat maybe 100 grams of meat jam a day and and cotton seed and so it just ends up you know pecking and eating what is on top and maybe you know something can happen so in that salam we noticed that they are in pellet form so that when the chick pecks on the pellet he's getting 100 percent of the mixture which is i found it that to be very efficient it is expensive there is a chinese company doing it and i hope it comes to kenya we also get to do that and we have foods that are given to the chicken we have the starter then we have the grower and then we have the finisher and they are well labeled in terms of how many days of the of the growth of the entire chicken you know like 21 day 21 to day 27 you're supposed to feed them this bag it's very clear for them which i thought was quite awesome yeah so that's it from us and thank you please remember to subscribe